With only two games left in the regular season for the Chicago Blackhawks on today's episode, I'll take a look at Connor Bedard's updated odds in the Calder Trophy race, and I'll also talk about Paul Ludwinski, Nick Lardis, and Martin Misiak joining on with the Rockford Ice Hogs. Your Locked On Blackhawks, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back and welcome on in to another episode of Locked On Blackhawks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I'm your host, Jack Bushman. If you want, you can go and give me a follow on X at Jack Bushman 2 And make sure to also go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account as well at Talkin' Hockey, so that way you can get all of the latest Blackhawks news and updates. Also, just a reminder, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you're tuning into the audio version or just a regular listener of the podcast version, please make sure to be downloading all of those latest episodes. You can go and rate and review the show as well. If you like what you're listening to on a daily basis, that also helps me out tremendously. And last but certainly not least, got to let you know, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash lockdown to get 150 $50 worth of bonus bets guaranteed. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Again, thank you all for joining me on another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks, your one stop shop for all things Chicago Blackhawks. What I wanted to start today's show with as the regular season is winding down here, the Blackhawks are taking on the Vegas Golden Knights in their second to last game of the season with a lovely 9, 10 p.m. Central Time puck drop with the game being out on the West Coast. Then they'll wrap things up for the season on Thursday with a battle against the Los Angeles Kings. But with only two games left here in the season, we're getting closer to finding out who are going to be all of the finalists for each and every award across the NHL. And of course, most notably for the Chicago Blackhawks and their fans, we're going to find out who are the finalists for this year's Calder Trophy as NHL Rookie of the Year. Obviously, Counter Bedard and Brock Faber, it's really only a two-horse race, uh, but we'll be interested to see who is going to get that third spot, whether or not it's going to be uh, Marco Rossi from the Minnesota Wild as well. He also potted 20 goals this year, or uh, if it's going to be Brock Faber, or not Brock Faber, excuse me, uh, if it's going to be Logan Cooley from the Arizona Coyotes who kind of finished up this campaign campaign on a high note and has potted 20 goals as a rookie as well. But regardless, we know the real race is going to come down to Connor Bedard of the Chicago Blackhawks, the number one overall pick, the next big superstar here in the NHL. Shell and Brock Faber, who as a rookie defenseman for Minnesota, look, I know I've made a lot of jokes about um, all the wild fans that are saying Brock Faber is going to win the Calder over Connor Bedard and just kind of that narrative being out there. I mean, I find it funny. You can kind of go and uh, take a look at FanDuel and see the odds there with our our sponsor. And uh, you'll notice that Connor Bedard is minus 2,500. So that goes to tell you what uh, kind of the betters or or what the uh, bookies are thinking in terms of whether or not Connor Bedard is going to win the whole thing. But I'm not, I, I, I never joke in a matter of taking anything away from Brock Faber, because if you go and look at his numbers and the way that he's played this year, truly as a number one defenseman for the Minnesota Wild, it's absolutely splendid. But what I did find interesting was uh, recently, just a couple of days ago, 14 beat writers for the Hockey News, which is a pretty notable um, publication for us hockey fans, they actually had a vote on the rookie of the year race. Like I said, just a couple of days ago, 14 of them voted with a five, four, three, two, one point system that we see in the NHL. I do want to make sure to emphasize that none of these 14 voters are actually eligible to vote on the NHL's rookie of the year. Um, But it's just interesting to kind of see where their minds are and to see kind of where they think this race is at in particular. Uh, Connor Bedard did come away and lead the pack with uh, 67 
total votes from that point system. But Brock, Brock Faber came in a close second at 57 points, just 10 points back of Connor Bedard, meaning that three of those 14 voters here gave Faber the first place vote over Connor Bedard. Now, I think we may see that a couple of times in the actual voting for the Calder Trophy, but I still don't see any world in which Connor Bedard is going to lose this thing. And again, that's not taking away from Brock Faber. It's just the pop that Connor Bedard has, uh, the marketing, obviously, whether or, or not you think that's impacting this race, I personally do. And just Connor Bedard's name and uh, brand and image and all that good stuff, like obviously him winning is the more likely scenario. Um, not only just because of that, but that certainly helps. But in terms of the points, I mean, Connor Bedard, the leading goal scorer among rookies this year with 22 goals, he's only done it in 62 games of action added along with 38 assists. Yes. Brock Faber has one more assist than Connor Bedard does, but Betsy has still outpaced him in points by 14 total. He's 13 points ahead of the next leading rookie scorer. Who's Margo Marco Rossi at 47 points. Uh, and look, Bedard got those 38 apples in 66 games while Brock Faber tallied 39 in 81. So 15 games more, uh, 15 more games of action for Brock Faber. And basically, if you look at all of the other rookies that are up there among the leading point scores in first year players, they've all played 80 or, or 81 games. They've been on the ice for a majority of the season. Connor Bedard missed a pretty significant stretch, was out for basically an entire month. So to put up the production that he did, considering this is going to be the worst Blackhawks offense in franchise history, unless they combine for 15 goals over these final two games, this is the fewest goals the Blackhawks have scored in a season ever. I mean, it has been hair pulling watching this team all year long. And Connor Bedard really hasn't had any help. Yes, the ascension of Philip Kurashev has been awesome, but this was a guy whose career high in points was 25 prior to this year, and that's uh, the best winger that Connor Bedard has really all season long. So any way, shape, or form about it, uh, I think you just have to give Connor Bedard the edge over Brock Faber. Certainly uh, the odds makers feel the same based on the minus 2,500 number that Connor Bedard is at right now. And if you all remember, I believe it was right when he got back from that injury, uh, I think there were still minus 250s, minus 300s out there on Bedard to win the Rookie of the Year. And I said at that time, that's there's value in that line because it's going to swell undoubtedly when he goes out there, gets healthy, and does what he does. Even though the pace has slowed down still this season, leading all rookies and uh, all categories in terms of what he does on a per-game basis. So to me, you know, yes, I have a little bit of bias here, but clearly based on what the odds makers are saying and kind of the feel around the league, even with the hockey riders. Yes, it was a close race. I don't expect it to be that close when the official voting goes down, but Connor Bedard is absolutely going to be the Calder trophy winner for NHL rookie of the year here for the 2023, 2024 campaign. Um, yeah. Not being able to hit that point per game margin is a little bit disappointing, um, but again, the Blackhawks offense really didn't do him any favors and the power play was pretty brutal for 75 to 80% of the year. So that didn't help in that matter either. And oh yeah, worst offense in franchise history, worst offense in the NHL. He's the leading scorer for them. He's the best player for them. Brock Faber, sure, he could be the best player for the Minnesota Wild other than Kirill Kaprizov probably. I don't think that's going to get him um, enough voting credit to get above Connor Bedard and to win the Calder trophy. But I just think it's interesting to kind of take a look at the odds, see what other, you know, reputable sources. I mean, 14 beat writers for the hockey writers. They're not any Joe Schmoes there. So I was curious to see kind of how they feel about this topic. Like I said, I don't think it's going to be as close uh, as their voting was, but we'll see what ends up happening. Um, we'll get the finalists here in just a couple of days time when the season comes to a close. Will be fun to see Connor Bedard uh, on stage to go and receive the call the trophy whenever he does get officially announced as the winner. All right. There is some talk on Connor Bedard's race to win the Calder Trophy here this season. Coming up in just a moment, Blackhawks fans, we'll talk a little bit about Ethan Del Mastro being returned to the Rockford Ice Hog, as well as a few other prospects joining Rockford here late in the season. But first, I got to talk to you all about 
FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball is in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game because right now, new customers get $150 worth of bonus bets guaranteed. All you got to do is go and sign up. Visit FanDuel.com slash lockdown. If you're not already a member, you'll get $150 worth of bonus bets, win or lose. And you can use those to bet on everything from slap shots throughout the Stanley Cup playoffs to home runs across all the major league ballparks to slam dunks on the way to the NBA championship. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Go and visit FanDuel.com slash lockdown right now and make your first bet an automatic win. Again, that's FanDuel.com slash lockdown. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Segment two, Ethan Del Mastro over the weekend, one of uh, my most highly touted prospects in the entire Blackhawks organization, got to make his NHL debut a couple of days before my other boy, Frank the Tank Nazar, did, uh, as he was rewarded with a call-up here by the Blackhawks late in the season, uh, just to kind of show him some love for everything well that he's done throughout his first professional campaign with the Rockford Icehawks this year. I mean, Ethan Del Mastro has been spectacular. And what's really cool to me is uh, when I first took over as the host of the show, Ethan was actually the first prospect or first player, first hockey player ever that I got to interview and have come on my podcast. And this was, you know, shortly after the Blackhawks uh, had drafted him 99th overall. I want to believe it Believe it uh, was with a fourth-round selection in the 2021 NHL draft. He was still the captain of the Mississauga Steelheads at that point in time, and it's just been so fun to watch him thrive along his journey these last couple of years, uh, getting dealt to the Sarnia Sting, being a really good shutdown defensive defenseman for them, transitioning marvelously here to the AHL, being an AHL All-Star as a first-year player, uh, has put up spectacular numbers, really um, taking on all the challenges, like he's been playing the other side sometimes for Rockford as well, just given how many left-handed defensemen are in the Blackhawk system. It feels like, you know, he or Nolan Allen or a couple of these guys are going to have to learn how to play their offside because of the sheer numbers of LHDs the Hawks have. But every challenge that's been thrown Ethan Del Mastro's way, I mean, he's taken it head on. Uh, and he's thrived so far this year. And I love to see the Blackhawks reward him with a call up. He got to make his NHL debut against the Nashville Predators last weekend. Was also in there when Frankie Nazar made his debut on Sunday against the Carolina Hurricanes. As expected, though, we did see Ethan Del Mastro returned back to Rockford yesterday morning as uh, they want to make sure he's ready to go and fully geared up for them ahead of their uh, hopefully long and successful run throughout the Calder Cup playoffs. Ethan Del Mastro has been a huge part of the success that Rockford has had and this great run that they've been on uh, over the last couple of months. And in his first couple of games, you know, nothing really too different about what he's been doing the last couple of years. Just plays a simplified straightforward game. He's got a big body. He's not scared of the dirty areas whatsoever. He's a chippy type of guy, plays hard in front of his own net. And what really always stands out to me about Ethan Del Mastro is how elusive of a skater he is for being a big body. I wouldn't call him like an elite skater or really even like above average, but he's crafty. He's smart. He knows how to use his body to block off, you know, uh, guys who are coming for checking and attacking the puck. Uh, he knows angles really well. Like he just doesn't make a whole lot of mistakes. He's a really smart and sound, simple defensive defenseman. And I think we uh, saw that in his first two games of NHL action on the Blackhawks third pairing along with Connor Murphy, who was nice to see back as well after missing 35 games due to injury. Another um, injury plagued campaign here for Connor Murphy, but uh, I think an Ethan Del Mastro Connor Murphy pairing makes a lot of sense, something we could see for the Blackhawks next season. But 
like I said, Del Mastro is now back down with the Rockford Ice Hogs as they're uh, down to their final three games of the regular season before the Calder Cup playoffs begin. And like I just outlined as well, it has been an amazing run for the Rockford Ice Hogs over the last two months. I believe they've won 20 of their last 25 or, or 26 games, and that puts them in a really good position here in the standings with things winding down and a real interesting race to be watching from afar with only three games left on the schedule. <clears throat> because of all the wins they've been racking up, Rockford is now just one point back of the Grand Rapids Griffins for the second spot in the AHL Central Division. Grand Rapids has 82 points with three games left, while Rockford has 81 points. So that should be a fun battle to see if Rockford will be able to surpass them and get that home ice advantage for the first round matchup. The Texas Stars are still in the fourth spot with 72 points with two games left, while the Manitoba Moose are at 67 points in the five spot with three games left on the season. Texas and Manitoba will officially be the teams to meet in the best of three play-in series. The winner will face the Milwaukee Admirals in the opening round. And we do know, regardless of whether the Ice Hogs finish second or they finish third, they will be taking on the Grand Rapids Griffins in the first round. And the winner uh, will get the Milwaukee Admirals if they're able to uh, best, if they're able to, um, best the uh, the winner of the best of three play-in series, obviously, but very nice that the Ice Hogs dodge that play-in series for the first time in the last couple of years here and would be really nice to get that home ice advantage over another one of the top teams in all of the AHL in the Grand Rapids Griffins. And to kind of give the Ice Hogs a little bit more of a boost here late in the year, we've seen a couple of prospects join them late. Most notably, though, is Paul Ludwinski signing his entry-level contract, and he's been loaned to the Ice Hogs by the Chicago Blackhawks. And this is a little bit of a technicality here. Uh, the reason they did that is to make sure that Ludwinski is going to be fully eligible to play in the AHL full-time next season, and he is going to be playing for the Ice Hogs, sure looks like, throughout the Calder Cup playoffs as he's already played in his first two professional games for the Ice Hogs. He's been centering their third line with uh, played with Michael Tepley for each of those two games. He's had Ryder Rolston and David Gust kind of rotate on the wing thus far, but no points thus far for Paulie Luds. But apparently from what I read out of Scott Powers' column today, the Blackhawks and the Ice Hogs were uh, pretty happy with the effort and how he looked in his first two games. It's going to be really interesting to see what type of player Paul Ludwinski is. And there's some question marks about him. Uh, obviously the offense, there was an uptick in that department this year and his uh, final campaign of action as the captain for the Kingston Frontenacs exploded for 69 points, 23 goals and 46 assists in 60 regular season games. And then went on to add six points, two goals and four assists in five playoff games before Kingston got knocked out. Um, but will that offense translate over to the professional level? That's the real good question. But fortunately, Ludwinski brings a lot of other things to the table. A really good skater. He's got a good motor. He could be a physical energy type of guy. Uh, plays with a lot of hustle. Plays with a lot of heart. Um, I don't know, again, how those offensive abilities are going to translate. He's not, you know, the most dynamic playmaker. And the goal scoring abilities don't jump off the charts or anything. Uh, but he's an effort guy. He's a hustle guy, a glue guy, maybe a little bit of a Swiss army knife potentially. So really excited to see how he's going to fare for the ice hogs here late in the season. And then uh, hopefully he'll have a big off season and be ready to uh, take on a full campaign worth of action at the professional level. Joining Ludwinski here and the ice hogs late in the season. Also, is Nick Lardis and Martin Misiak. However, it doesn't seem like these two are going to get in any game action. And we've seen the Blackhawks organization uh, go this path the last couple of years. Paul Ludwinski was actually someone who uh, signed on an ATO with the Ice Hogs after the Frontenacs got knocked out of the playoffs last year. Gavin Hayes also did the same thing. Didn't get any game action in, but nice to see Nick Lardis, you know, getting a little bit of experience around some pro guys, figuring out what the grind is all about. And also, he signed his entry-level contract with the Blackhawks as well. Three-year deal at just under $900,000. Um 
But like I said, because he's likely not going to play in any games for the Ice Hogs, he's just going to be practicing and uh, around the team, likely to go back to Brantford for one more year. So um, <clears throat> that deal isn't going to be starting this season. It's it's going to be slid for a couple of years. Um, and I think I think Lard is going back to Brantford next year, especially after the second half of his season got derailed due to injury. I think that's the right call. The biggest thing for him is he just needs to get stronger and kind of round out his game a little bit more. He's got the speed. He's got the goal scoring abilities. That's for sure. Uh, potted what 20, what did he pot this year? 29 goals and added 21 assists and 37 regular season games for the Bulldogs uh, added eight points in uh, six games, four goals and four assists after he returned from injury in the playoffs, the goal scoring and the speed that's absolutely there for Nick Lardis just kind of figuring out the rest of everything else and certainly is going to be an undersized player if he does reach the NHL. So he's got to kind of figure out how to maneuver around all of that. But for a third round pick, 67th overall, I mean, got to be ecstatic about uh, the type of progression that Nick Lardis has made this year. And hopefully he'll explode and be able to stay healthy uh, when he returns to Brantford, if that does happen as expected next season. And then for Martin Misiak in the same boat is Nick Lardis signing an ATL with the Ice Hogs, the 55th overall selection for the Blackhawks in the 2023 NHL draft. A much different player, though, than Nick Lardis. Misiak has some good size to him, six foot two, uh, roughly 195, 200 pounds. Lardis is a winger. Misiak is someone who could play center because of his defensive abilities and his size, uh, but isn't, you know, known for being an elite playmaker or anything. He tallied 47 points, 23 goals and 24 assists in 60 regular season games for, uh, why am I blanking on who Martin Misiak played for this year? The Erie Outers, duh. He was the first overall selection in the CHL import draft. Uh, added two points, one goal and one assist in uh, four playoff games. Unfortunately, the Otters were swept out of the OHL playoffs. But like Lardis, just an opportunity for Misiak to be around the guys, get a little bit of experience, see kind of what it's all about. And then I fully expect him to return to the Otters uh, next year as well. He'll take on a bigger role, probably be a first or second line center for them, if I had to guess, and hopefully develop that offensive ability a little bit more and just continue to be a good physical presence on the defensive side of things. All right, there is an update on the Rockford Ice Hogs. They're down to their final three games of the AHL regular season. Coming up in just a moment here, before I wrap things up for today's show, I still have to talk about Roman Kansarov, another second-round pick for the Blackhawks in 2023, helping his team which reach the Gagarin Cup in the KHL playoffs. But first, I need to talk to you all about Sleeper. We're getting close to the finish line here in the NHL's regular season, and the Stanley Cup playoffs are right around the corner. But regardless of where your team is at currently in the standings, I want to remind you that you could be winning real big right here, right now, by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Lockdown NHL Network. And Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contra contests. And entries can be made in under 60 seconds. And all you have to do is pick whether studs like Connor Bedard, Artemi Panarin, or Patrick Kane will record more or less than their Sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, points, shots on goal, plus minus and more in every given game. And again, you can win a hundred times your cash by playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. You just need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me right. Blackhawks fans. You have the opportunity to win a hundred times your money by playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. So start paying attention, make the right picks and you could be winning real big. And right now you can also go and use the promo code lockdown NHL in all caps to get up to an hundred dollar match on your first deposit with Sleeper. Again, that's promo code Lockdown NHL in all caps, and you can go and see Sleeper's terms of use right now if you're wanting more details. Back here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of 
the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, please make sure to go and smash that like button. Comment down below as to which of the prospects that joined Rockford later on here in the season, Paul Ludwinski, Martin Misiak, or Nick Lardis, out of those three, which are you the most excited for to see at the NHL level with the Blackhawks? Which one of those three do you think has the highest upside? And also, make sure to go and hit that subscribe button. Won't cost you anything and really does help me out tremendously. And also make sure to go and check out the new Lockdown Sports today because Lockdown has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And Lockdown Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts from Lockdown, plus our national shows covering every single league. So make sure to go and check out Lockdown Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Segment three. I've been talking a lot today about all of the Blackhawks prospects or not just today, but in general over the last few weeks, talking a lot about all the Blackhawks prospects that are uh, playing in junior hockey and taking part in the CHL playoffs and also what's going down with the Rockford Ice Hogs as they're gearing up for their run in the Calder Cup playoffs. And I've also been talking about all the Hawks prospects that took part in the NCAA tournament, but I certainly don't want to forget about what Blackhawks 2023 second round pick, the 55th overall selection. No, just kidding. Martin Misiak was 55th. Was Roman Cancer off 44th? I want to say he was 44th, but now I'm going to have to look it up because these little details are really what drive me crazy, Blackhawks fans. Yeah, thank you, Jack. Roman Kansarov was the 40, 44th overall selection. Martin Misiak was 55th. But I certainly can't forget about the 44th overall selection in the 2023 NHL draft based on what he's been doing to help Metalurg reach the Gagarin Cup in the KHL playoffs. My oh my, Roman Kansarov is playing some really good hockey right now. And a few weeks ago as well, I kind of outlined how the Blackhawks are probably thanking their lucky stars in terms of the type of year that Roman Kansarov had, because uh, he only played one game in the KHL last season when the Blackhawks drafted him. Yeah, he dominated the MHL, but there's always debates as to whether or not those skills are going to translate to the KHL, let alone the NHL level as well. And there was no even guarantee that Kansarov was going to be a full-time KHL player for Metalurg this season. They didn't know what type of role he would have, if he'd be playing consistently or not, but he wound up playing all of the season with Metalurg in the KHL, played in 50, 53 games for them this season. And as the year has progressed, he's only gotten better and better and better. And so far in the KHL playoffs, he's just been taking on a larger and larger role. He was mostly a third to fourth line guy in the regular season. He's been bumped up into the top six here in the KHL playoffs and just had a huge game on Monday with two primary apples to help Metalurg reach the Gagarin Cup with a 3-2 to two win in Game 7. And after those two points, Kansarov now has 12 points total in 19 games here in the KHL playoffs, four goals and eight assists. Um, I thought I had this written down here somewhere, but I believe he's sixth in the KHL playoffs in points right now at 19 years old. Kid still isn't going to turn 20 until September. So uh, got to be happy with the progression that you've seen out of Roman Kansarov playing a significant big time role for not only a KHL team, one of the top teams in the entire KHL. I mean, really, really impressive stuff out of Kansarov. Uh, and I did read in... Scott Powers article here this morning. You got a little bit of a quote from Blackhawks uh, front office member Mark Eaton talking about Roman Kansarov. I wanted to be sure to share all of that with you here today. Quote, Kansarov has a ton of upside with his skill set, the skating ability, the skill, the competitive, excuse me, the competitiveness that he has. Again, the KHL is a place that he's going to be able to continue to grow as a player and develop. He's a player that is intriguing, and we're excited about the thought. A couple of years from now, him potentially coming over here. And yeah, when you watch Kansarov play, the first thing that really stands out is the high-octane pace that he could play at. I mean, the guy can buzz up and down the ice. He's good, got good offensive instincts and a good overall skill set, really good playmaking abilities. Uh, he's sharp on his edges, and he's pretty feisty for being only – 
five foot nine. Like he's not afraid to go and scrap. He'll fight hard in battles. Uh, and even on one of the primary assists that he had on Monday night, a beautiful play down low in the corner to, to force a turnover there. So yeah, a big time year out of Roman Kansarov. Um, and like Mark Eaton said, you know, there are a lot of opportunities for him to continue to develop properly in the KHL at a young age. I'm, I don't think the Blackhawks are worried about him being there, but they do certainly want him to come over when his contract expires with Metalurg. He did sign an extension earlier on this year that now runs through the end of the 2025-2026 season. So he does still have at least two years left in Russia after signing that extension, but sure seems like the Blackhawks will want him to come over after that deal expires and he'll still only be 21 going on 22 uh, if that when that time comes. So the Blackhawks are absolutely going to want to be signing him and having him come over for that 2026-2027 season. And yeah, hopefully he's able to put together uh, another couple of real consistent seasons and build off of this one in his first year as a full-time member of the KHL. Hopefully he'll be able to uh, put up some really good numbers for Metalurg over these last couple of years, and hopefully he'll be able to keep this up and help Metalurg win the Gagarin Cup. That will certainly uh, help get his name out there and maybe recognized by some more folks just in general in the hockey scene. And, yeah, there's a lot to like about his game with the – pace and the offensive abilities that he has the only downside really is just the uh the size being only five foot nine currently listed at 175 to 180 pounds depending on where you look at but that that tenacity you know he still has that inside of him but he's he's gonna have to keep that up to have success at the nhl level so Wishing the best for Roman Kansarov and Metal Arg here in the Gagarin Cup. They're going to be taking on Lokomotiv in the championship. I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot of content from Scott Powers covering all of that. And I'll make sure to be breaking it all down and talking about how things continue to go for Roman Kansarov right here on the Locked On Blackhawks podcast. All right, that is going to wrap up today's episode of Locked On Blackhawks. As always, thank you all again for tuning into the show. Be sure to go and follow Lockdown Blackhawks for free right now, wherever you may be listening to your podcast, and to go and subscribe to Lockdown Blackhawks on YouTube. That way you can get the latest episode as soon as it's uploaded to YouTube each and every day. As always, I'm your host, Jack Bushman. Go and give me a follow on X at Jack Bushman too, and make sure to check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talkin' Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. So until tomorrow's episode, everyone, enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you next time on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.